Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, the channel, um, well, and welcome to also my new subscribers. Uh, today I'm going to be going over just how to make a quick um, animation. This is not going to be really a grasshopper tutorial in terms of creating, you know, the series of uh, nodes, but I'm just going to show you mainly how to take a uh, like a, a parametric model and then animate out a series of images that you know, demonstrate that parametric ability of that model. Anyway, so I'm just, I'll just quickly walk you through the script and then we'll go into the process of actually creating an animation in uh, Photoshop. You can also do it in Premiere or whatever other software. Um, so quiet here, let's turn on uh, bifocals just so it's clear that everyone can see everything. Um, anyways, what I've done is I've just taken a, um, a central plane that I defined, created a, a grid on it, and in, using this point list component, you can just see you know the the order in which the points are um, constructed. But that's not really uh, that was not really the purpose of it. So what I basically have done is I'm using similar to my last tutorial, which you will be able to check out. Um, I think it'll be linked inside of this video. Um, I basically used a, a graph map, which I've set to here, the Perlin noise, which is uh, just a mathematical way of generating like a noise um, network. And then I'm just reconstructing a new domain and, and using and changing the Z values of that grid. So as you can see here, and, and then I'm just using a Delaunay measure and then Camel Clark, which is part of the, if I go Control Alt here, that should be that's going to be in the Weaver Bird um, plugin. There's a couple plugins which I will I will show you how to download as well. Um, and then okay, so that's that's generally it. Um, going to this point is the entire um, entire actual like parametric modeling of this uh, of this script. Um, and the rest of it over here is visualization. And what I'm going to, going to be animating today is taking, so I've taken this, these list of, uh, these numbers that have gone through this Perlin, um, Perlin noise. So then I'm remapping them to be an actual viable um, set of Zs, Z values. Um, and then what I'm going to be uh, doing today is a little trick, which is just shifting the values of that list to create a seemingly noise, um, like almost wave-like process. So here I can show you what, what. So as I change the shift value of, of this list, it's the same numbers. All it's doing is shifting. And it's creating this very nice like rippling here. And uh, actually if I go over here. This is, so this is what I'm going to be animating. That's why I kind of put it in purple. Anyways simple enough not really trying to show i mean you can see how quite how quite simple that process is of making that um, mesh which i've made here and then all i've done is um is visualized with mesh colors this component is a plug from a plugin called mesh um mesh plus i believe and it's also on food for rhino um and then i'm just coloring it by a gradient of uh mapping out the z values you know so the highest points are represented in white and the lowest are in dark blue. Then more uh, more Weaver Bird plugins. And what I'm doing here is just um, extracting that that um, that vertical, that vertical line. So basically I'm taking the naked edges, projecting them down, mesh loft in between, which here, this is in the Chroma Doors plugin. So these are all these plugins you don't have to go and download. But I do recommend some of these um, plugins for, you know, mesh modeling specifically. And then I am, and then I'm just coloring that as well. And what I've done over here is I've just generated a frame number. So I've taken, I'm going to use this um, slider component to generate the, um, the offset of those lists, but also coincidentally, it's going to be the frame count. So using the concatenate um, component, I'm just going to generate so it's what all that's doing is adding a series of texts together. So I'm in here I have put in, you know, frame uh, hash or number, and then so that's gonna concatenate that. So that will change as those frames over there change. And then this is just another um, 
a human component, which is sort of like good for visualization within Grasshopper. Um, and it's called Justified Text 3D. And that's just, you know, quickly setting a point over here, um, rotating it, you know, so it's oriented correctly. Um, and then, you know, size and font, which is pretty convenient. Anyway, so in all of these things can be changed. This entire um, process can be changed. I can change the number of subdivisions, you know. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of, um, you can you can tweak this basically to your own, own desire height as well of the noise. I can have a relatively flat model, but I thought sort of, you know, the more Z-depth, the more interesting it is. Anyway, so let's get into animating this. So what I'm going to do is, it's important also to set this slider to have sort of the amount of frames that you're going to want. So in this case, I have my maximum being 200. So I'm going to export 200 frames of um, to animate later in Photoshop. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to reduce this, position this a little bit bigger and better in the in the screen. Okay, that sounds good. And then what I'm going to do is right click on this and go down to animate. Okay. So now we're going to get a new um, pop up, which you're going to set. First off, you have to set this folder to be where you're going to animate all these files to because it's going to output a whole bunch of frames. So you're going to want to be conscious of where those go or else you're going to, it's going to be like a deluge of frames all over your desktop. And next thing you know, you're going to be uh, deleting everything. Um, so, okay, so frame count, be aware of how many that's going to be. Um, and then you can, you know, of course, see the resolution in what viewport. So I'm keeping it parallel. I'm in the parallel viewport for sort of an isometric, um, an isometric export. Then I'm going to click OK. And this now will is generating these frames. And I'll, of course, skip to the, um, skip through this part. OK, great. So that's um, finished. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to um, minimize out of this. I'm going to go to my folder, which, which now has all of these frames. And you can see um, they're sort of serially arrayed in here. So now what we're going to do is open Photoshop. And you, so you can also easily do this in Premiere, or I'm sure there's uh, an in-browser way of doing this as well, where you just drop your frames into onto a website, but I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop. Um, that's just the way that I normally do it. So you just go to File, um, Script, Load Files into Stack. And this is the part where I always get uh, a little bit lost because there's a few um, finicky ways. So just click one and then control A to select every single frame. So now you have 200 of these frames. Click OK. It's going to take a second to load. Um, and they're all BMP images, which works. I don't really know what specifically a BMP image is. A bitmap. Bump. Who knows? Um, not that it matters. Okay, so now what it's going to do is it's going to, of course, bring in all of these um, 200 frames. And I'm, of course, going to skip ahead. OK, perfect. That took a bit of a second. I'm using a uh, like a, a, a Razer laptop, so it's, um, it's quick, but not that quick. Um, anyway, so what you're going to need to do is have this timeline. Um, here, I'll close it and then open it. Timeline, um, timeline uh, frame open. What you're going to do then is go to Create Frame Animation, and then go here and click um, Make frames from layers. And now what it'll do is bring in every single frame as like this small. And then if I play it, you can see now here, here's our, uh, our GIF, which is working perfectly, except for I notice now that it's backwards. So I think I need to go to doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, here, right click on this and then, or sorry, left click, and then just go to reverse frames here. And now it should, if I play again, now perfect, it's counting up, which is exactly what we want. Um, and this is pretty nice because you can actually go and add, for example, an adjustment layer. So if you wanted to, for example, desaturate, you know, this, you know, make it black and white, you could go and when you export that GIF, it'll be black and white. 
but I happen to, maybe I'll turn down the color a tiny bit. So let's just do something like that. Okay, cool. So we have that all working out. You can add overlays, you can do whatever you want in Photoshop. Um, also crop, but I'm just gonna um, export this GIF now and show you how to export. So you go to um, file, export, and then save for web legacy. I don't know why it's in save for web legacy either. All these like intricacies of how to import export really uh really is a pain but it is what it is anyway so you go to get i think there's a preset for some reason i was told to use this one two eight dithered um and then change the number of colors to 256 so this one so you maximize the amount of color so it doesn't compress your colors um so gif I guess it was on the preset until we changed it. Um, and then you can change the image size. I'm not gonna do that. And then this looping option is important. If you're gonna want it to, for example, just loop over and over again. And then what you're gonna do is save. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop, call it test gif. And then, okay, it's saving, cool. By the way, um, yeah, thanks to all the, uh, the new, uh, subscribers for liking and you know commenting on my videos it's it's nice to have uh people interacting and finding them useful so please leave a comment like and subscribe uh i'll be posting a lot more content um and also yeah let me know what you want to see because sometimes i'm like uh in my head you know like what am i gonna make who knows um okay so what we have now is out of we don't have a bunch of images we have right here a fully functioning gif directly from grasshopper um, yeah, you can make these really high resolution. Of course, you can make them like nicer, more interesting than what I did. I was just, uh, kind of messing around and wanting to make, you know, something simple. Anyways, don't want to dither on too long. Um, so yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, I'll see you in the next one.